Hello friends, this video on continuity and differentiability part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 15. Let's take one example to first explain what is composite functions and then we'll try to find derivative of composite function. So first composite function is not a something a function which you get by mixing two kind of function. For example, if you take this function, so this function is nothing but, uh, let's suppose if my gx is x cube and my hx is 2x plus 1. So this is nothing but g of h. If you observe, why? Because I have this function 2x plus 1, there is one function. And on that, I'm doing the cube of that. Such kind of function is called composite function. So, uh, if you don't know composite functions, we, again, we have a video in class 11 where we have discussed composite functions. Please watch that. So, we have this composite function. And sometimes the composite functions are really complex. And we are asked to find derivative of that. And that's what we use chain rule. But what is chain rule? We'll discuss in the next slide. But before introducing the chain rule, let me just give you based on why do we need chain rule. So, as I told right, before anything, before you study anything, you should know why we are studying this. So, my fx is equal to 2x plus 1 cube. This is one example of composite function, which is composed of two functions, hx is equal to 2x plus 1 and gx is equal to x cube. So, this is my function g of h and I want to find derivative of such function. So, one approach is the crude approach. So, what I can do is I can just simplify this 2x plus 1 cube so this becomes 8x cube plus 12x square plus 6x plus 1 what I did so if you take derivative of this this becomes 8 into x cube becomes 3x square plus 12 into x square becomes 2x plus 6 into x becomes 1 derivative of constants becomes 0 this is something which I didn't tell you. You take any constant number, fx is equal to suppose 7. You find derivative of this, this is 0. Logically, also it is true because if you see, if you take a graph of this guy, fx is equal to 7, this is something like this. Correct? So, if you want to find derivative of this at any point, the slope is always 0 for this guy. Correct. So it is zero. Also, I told derivative is nothing but rate of change of y with respect to x. So for a constant number, the y never changes. The y never changes for any change in x. You change x from 1 to 5, there is no change in y. Y is always 7. So the derivative of constant number is always 0. So by graphically also we can prove this. You take the graph, you find slope is always 0. Or logically also if you see, Slow uh, derivative is nothing but rate of change of y with respect to x for a constant number y never changes so delta y is always 0 so this becomes 0 so this comes out to be 24x square plus 24x plus 6 into 1 6 and there is nothing but if you take 6 common so this becomes 6 4x square plus 4x plus 1 and this is nothing but 2x plus 1 whole square so 6 into 2x plus 1 whole square. So this is my derivative for 2x plus 1 in the crude way. I just expanded this and got this. But if it is, let's suppose x to the power 9, it's difficult to expand. So in this question, I took this number 3 just to prove that the result come out same if I use um, the composite function way or I just assume this is a normal function expand and get the derivative. Correct? So the reason why we took 3 is because I wanted to expand this and to get the result and then I wanted to solve the same question using composite of function way where I assume this function as a, a composite function where hx is equal to 2x plus 1 and gx is equal to x cube and then solve it. So if you see the now in this case if I assume in this fashion what I can do is I can assume let's suppose 2x plus 1 is equal to t. Why? Because I am using this guy as one function. Correct. 
So my fx comes out to be tq. Correct. Now, if I or let's suppose this is y, y is equal to this. Y is equal to 2x plus 1 cube. Correct. So if my y is equal to 2x plus 1 cube, I'll write here y is equal to 2x plus 1 cube and 2x plus 1 is equal to t. So I get y is equal to t cube. So I get dy by dt as nothing but 3t square. Correct. But what I am looking for, I am looking for dy by dx. I have got this more this, this function also. In this function, I can get dt by dx. Why? Because t is equal to 2x plus 1. In this case, if I want to find dt by dx, I get dt by dx as nothing but 2 into 1 plus 0. So dt by x, dx is 2. Correct? Is equal to 2. Now, if I want to find dy by dx, if you see here, dy by dx, this is nothing but dy by dt into dt by dx. Correct? dt dt cancel. This becomes dy by dx. If you want to find uh, dy by dt, this we have already found, this becomes 3t square. Correct? And dt by dx is 2. This is nothing but 6t square. What is the value of t? t is 2x plus 1. So this becomes 6 into 2x plus 1 square. So this is my answer actually. And if you see the answer which I get here, and here is same. Thus, this proves that I can use this kind of formulas where I can say that dy by dx is equal to dy by dt into dt by dx. And this is nothing but chain rule. So I'll give you mathematical definition for this. But I took this example just to uh, tell you the need for chain rule and you know that this kind of thing exists actually. So the same function when I assume this is not a composite function and I just use a crude wave on answer, the same function I assume to be a composite function where hx and gx are the two function and fx was nothing but g of h and then what I did was this guy I differentiated, this guy I differentiated. If you multiply these two guys, I get my dy by dx. So this is one example where I have used, uh, uh, I will try to establish the chain rule. So here I took y is equal to t cube because I replaced 2x plus 1 with t. Then I got dy by dt. And then t also I have 2x plus 1, I got dt by dx. d by by dt into dt by dx came out to be dy by dx. And I found the answer to be same. So what is the mathematical definition of chain rule? The chain rule says if f be a real valid function, which is a composite function, please note, chain rule is only used for composite functions. So if I have a, a function which can be represented as a composite function of two functions u and v, correct, where f is nothing but v of u, correct, f is nothing but v of u. Then we take t is equal to ux, this will be a function, and if both the dt and dt by dx and dv by dt exist, if both exist, so if I have, if I assume t as ux and then both these exist, please note, these both should exist. If this exists, then I can say that df by dx is nothing but dv by dt into dt by dx. You can't cut like this. You, you should not cut like this. This is illegal. You shouldn't do it like this. But the, the logic here is if dv by dt and dt by dx exist, if these two exist and my function is a composite function, the one, the, for example, the last example we took, for example, we had this function fx is equal to 2x plus 1 q. So this I can write as nothing but no, u of v where u is x q and v is 2x plus 1. Correct? So I can say that fx is nothing but u of v here, u of v. So in that case also we can use chain. Thank you.
visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.